Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. The management of the Dunes Motel proudly presents America's most unpredictable comedian, Mr. Tubby Boo. So many people say, oh, I got to tell you, girls, it's a sin to be a symbol of sex. People just look at me and say, there's that horny Jew. <laughs> I, my hand, I, I don't know how people get this impression of me, because if you're not getting more than me, you're not getting any. <laughs> I don't want to tell you how bad my luck is. But this afternoon, I had a date with a hunchback girl. I had the hole dug in the sand. She never showed up. I could show up at a woman's prison with a handful of pardons I couldn't get laid. I mean that. M&Ms melt in my hand. But it's a sin to be a fat narcissus. Don't laugh, lady. A narcissus, that's one that looks in the mirror all the time. And until I can see it without looking in the mirror, I'll keep on looking in the mirror. You laugh. I'm built like a moose and hung like a mouse. I know what I got. I walk around the house all day with a Pepsi Cola, pouring it on my schmuck, yelling, Come alive! We're in the Pepsi generation! I think the guy I'm laughing right away. I said something funny. They think that's dirty. A schmuck, that's a guy that gets out of the shower to take a leak. <laughs> you know, you talk about... This is the truth, girls. Listen to me when I tell you. I'm the only guy I know can look at dirty movies and get a hard in. <laughs> People don't seem to understand that I don't want this reputation of being a sex fiend. I had a woman said to me the other night, You're a pervert. You go to bed with anything, a cat, a dog, a worm, a chicken. I said, a chicken? Never. You gotta have a little class. 
That's like the woman, she's walking down the street with one of her breasts hanging out. Cop said, lady, that's indecent. She said, my God, I left the baby on the bus. <laughs> that's like the guy that walks into the doctor's office. He drops his pants. He said, doctor, look at this. Doctor said, I'm sorry, sir, you're in the wrong office. I'm a dentist. He said, I know, I got a tooth in it. <laughs> you people don't know the problems I go through. That's like the woman walks in the doctor's office with a chicken on her head. The psychiatrist says, can I help you? The chicken said, get this broad off my ass, will you? <laughs> you know, I pick up, this is a true story. I got in a cab today with a woman cab driver. I said, take me to the cheapest whorehouse in Florida. She said, you're in it. <laughs> and I'll tell you, did you hear about the guy says to his wife, he says, Becky, I'm going to buy a condominium. She says, I don't care what you buy, I'm still using the pills. <laughs> and darling, may I ask you a question, sweetheart? Will it stop you? Just to say yes, this means yes, that means no, all right? Answer me the first thing that comes to your mind. What is the closest thing to silver? No, the Lone Ranger's balls. You're close. <laughs> Lovely girl. I don't know why women always find me attractive. I have to cut my hair like this so they don't mistake me for Rock Hudson. No, some broad the other night said I look just like a Hudson. Well, it could have been worse. You could have said an Edsel, right? No, but you know, if I was to tell you people what my wife looks like, you wouldn't believe it. I married a broad, weighed 395 pounds. We had a walk down the aisle, single file. T formation with a double wing back. I met this broad in a garage. I couldn't back out. This is the truth. I remember how I spent my honeymoon like it was yesterday. And you know what a lousy damn day yesterday was. We went to a Chinese drive-in movie. Ever been to a Chinese drive-in movie? They got a hell of a motto. Get your nookie while you looky. <laughs> Once knew a broad was so stupid, she said, I can't go to bed with you, I'm afraid I'll get pregnant. I said, why don't you use the pills? She said, I try, but every time I walk, they fall out. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got to tell you one of my favorites. Uh, two Yiddish men meet on the street, the one says, Oi, what are you doing in Miami Beach? She said, Oi, I'm having my lousy time. He said, what's the matter? He said, I've been constipated for two weeks. <laughs> for two weeks, I didn't take a crap. He said, that's one thing I got nothing to worry about. He said, 8 o'clock in the morning, when I'm in New York with the grandchildren, when I'm in Miami Beach, you could set a watch, a train, a plane, <laughs> a rocket. 8 o'clock, I go. He said, oi, vey, what a lucky man you are. He said, not really, I don't get up till 10.30. <laughs> See the Ten Commandments. We broke six of them before the damn picture was half over. <laughs> oh, life is for the living. Thank you, Mikola. Walking around behind me. I don't trust people behind me. <laughs> Especially with Max with him. You know, you would be... <laughs> A little inside joke we have here at the club. But you would be surprised if I were to tell you the different things that have happened to me because of taking my wife to the movie. This is the truth. Some cop come walking over to the car. He said to me, what are you doing? I said, nothing. He said, get out and hold the light for me. <laughs> I stood there like a schnook for about an hour. You should have seen the light stick on this guy. <laughs> it was enough to choke a horse. Winnie, winnie, winnie. Nay, nay, nay. Finally, her and I drove off together. We got about a half a mile away from the damn private movie, and the car broke down. I got under it. I started to fix it. She figured four hands are better than two. She got under and tried to help me. Ten minutes later, the same cop touched me on the foot with his nightstick. He says, what are you doing now, fat boy? I said, what does it look like? We're fixing a car. He said, I'll give you three good reasons why you're not fixing a car. Number one, your feet are up and her feet are down. Number two, there's 20 people standing around here watching. And number three, the car rolled down the hill five minutes ago. <laughs> What the hell could I do? I had to get out. Oh, I got to, I got to, I can't talk about my wife because I get sick every time I think of her. But I got to tell you this. <laughs> oh, you know my wife, eh? 
My God, you're skinny, lady. If you had on a red dress, you'd look like a thermometer. How much you weigh, sweetheart? About 98. 98? I have more than that for breakfast. My left boob weighs more than you, darling. That's all right. If you go out with me, I'll sit your ass on top and spin you around. And if you stop at my big toe, I'll give you a teddy bear. Oh, I like to play games, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> That's all right. You're my kind of woman. Any kind of woman is my kind of woman. Did you hear about the two queers that meet on the street? The one said, I just read the medical journal. If you have sex with a woman, you get cancer. The other one said, is that a fact? He said, no, but spread the rumor. I got to tell you, did you hear about the little Japanese guy? He's walking around Japan. He's got number two tattooed on his chest. In his belt, he's got a great big sword. So a guy walks up to me and says, pardon me, buddy. Would you mind telling me what that number two stands for? He said, asshole. Asshole. You asshole? I tell you. <laughs> In Japan, I am number two greatest source. Just then a little fly comes by. The guy pulls out the sword. He goes, <sniffs> cuts the fly right in half. Well, this amazes the other guy. About a week later, he's walking around again. This time he sees another little chap. Only this guy's got number one tattooed on his chest. But instead of having a big sword, he's got what looks like a little letter opener stuck in his belt. And the guy said, wait a minute. Don't tell me that you're the greatest swordsman in all Japan. He says, asshole, in all Japan, I am number one swordsman. Just then a little flag comes by, he pulls out the little paper opener, he goes... <laughs> and the damn fly is still flying. <laughs> the guy said, wait a minute. Last week I saw number two, he came out, he pulled out the sword, <laughs> cut the fly right in half. You come out with that little paper opener, <laughs> and the fly is still flying. He said, asshole, he may fly, but he don't make sexy no more. <laughs> he cut his communes off in flight, lady. <laughs> Do me a favor, darling, pull your dress down, help air pollution, will you? <laughs> You see what happens? I tell people, people see me, they say, Oh, there's that one with the big knockers and the dirty mouth. Then they go out in the car and eat every damn thing but the steering wheel. <laughs> you see, I always tell my audience one thing. No matter what I say, no matter what I do, you came to see me. I didn't go looking for you. <laughs> people hate me because I tell them about sex. I am an exponent of sex. I don't practice what I preach. <laughs> but I do understand these problems. I could tell you a story. This is the most fantastic story you'll ever hear. This woman goes to see the doctor. She said, Doctor, I can't understand it. My husband doesn't have sex with me anymore. Well, the doctor takes one look at this broad. She's got halitosis. B.O. She's wearing open-toed army boots. She's got on tight capri pants with a fat ass. A turtleneck sweater that starts at her ears and ends at her knish. Her hair is all for shimmelt. Her face is all for shtuk, no makeup, nothing. The doctor said, why, you dizzy? Your problem is not mental. It's, it's, it's not physical, it's mental. No wonder your husband won't have anything to do with you. Why don't you fix yourself up? Stop at the beauty parlor, get your hair fixed, put a little makeup on, stop at the hardware store, get some less toil, gargle with it. <laughs> Douche with Mr. Clean. <laughs> Lay in a bathtub of gasoline for three days, smoke and soak. <laughs> Have you got a negligee that buttons down the front? She said, no, I've got one that buttons down the back. He said, well, put the friggin' thing on backwards. <laughs> leave a few buttons open, leave your booby hang out. So the broad goes through the whole schmear. She stops at the beauty parlor with the hair, with the makeup. Stops at the hardware with the gargle and the perfume all over. And the bath. She puts the negligee on backwards. Leaves her booby hang out and she's lying on the bed. Her husband walks in. He says, what the hell are you supposed to be? She said, don't you notice anything different? He said, yeah, you got your friggin' negligee on backwards. <laughs> She said, how can you tell? He said, because the shit stains in the front. <laughs> ah. oh. Oh.
<laughs> oh, if we could all settle down for just a minute, I'd like to take this opportunity to sing one of my favorite Al Jolson songs, a song entitled Rock a Bye Your Baby. Your baby with a Dixie melody. I've said when you grew, just grew the two from my heart. Again. Just hang that great old mammy pie right on that Mason Dixon line. And swing it from Virginia to Tennessee with all the love that's in ya. I said we throw on my lady. Sing that song again for me. Play it soft and low, just as low. You had this. The minute that they play that swanny river, so rock a bye. Your rock a bye, baby, with a Dixie melody. I said a weep, a weep, weep, weep no more, my lady. Won't you sing that song again for me? Why play it soft and low? Just as long you had this bad boy on your knees. 